Good morning. And a special welcome to our online community this morning. We begin with some announcements. First of all, um, we're very excited to announce that the Celtic Fair will be the weekend of November 5th and 6th, and that Carol Rocco is the chair of that committee, and that committee and all who are interested will have a meeting today after church. So if you're interested in the, the work of the Celtic Fair and want to learn more, then please join them um, after coffee hour in the parish hall. Um, last year, I, last Sunday, I mentioned that um, I wanted to start a book study with John Philip Newell's book, and that will start on Sunday, the 25th of September. Next Sunday, you will be able to sign up for that book study as well as order books, so please look forward to that as well. Because um, I am part-time with you during transition, besides Sunday, in general, my days here at St. Columba will be Tuesday and Thursday. And if there is a change to my days during the week, they will be announced in the uh, parish uh, Sunday bulletin. Um, uh, because of a long planned um, weekend away, um, Nancy Brown, the Reverend Nancy Brown, will be with you this coming week. She will be here Thursday and Sunday, and I know you will welcome her uh, because she has been with you before. Are there other announcements for the good of the whole? All right. Thank you. My sisters and brothers, blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Please join me. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, 
and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson for today is from Jeremiah. Israel has forgotten and turned away from their God, breaking the covenant their forebears made and descending into worship of idols. Listen now for the word of God. Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, what wrong did your ancestors find in me that they went far from me and went after worthless things and became worthless themselves. They did not say, where is the Lord who brought us up from the land of Egypt, who led us in the wilderness, in a land of deserts and pits, in a land of drought and deep darkness, in a land no one passes through, where no one lives. I brought you into a plentiful land to eat its fruits and its good things. But when you entered, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. The rulers transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and went after things that do not profit. Therefore, once more, I accuse you, says the Lord, and I accuse your children's children. Cross to the coasts of Cyprus and look, Send to Kedar and examine with care. See if there ever has been such a thing. Has a nation changed its gods, even though they are no gods? But my people have changed their glory for something that does not profit. Be appalled, O heavens, at this. Be shocked. Be utterly desolate, says the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me the fountain of living water, and dug out cisterns for themselves, crack cisterns that can hold no water. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. We will read together the psalm printed in your bulletin, Psalm 81, verses 10 to 16. Sing with joy to God our strength and raise a loud shout to the God of Jacob. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and said, Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. And yet my people did not hear my voice and Israel would not obey me. 
So I gave them over to the stubbornness of their hearts to follow their own devices. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. I should soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him, and their punishment would last forever. But Israel would I feed with the finest wheat and satisfy him with honey from the rock. The second lesson is from the book of Hebrews. God will provide for every need. So Christians should spend their energy providing for the needs and comforts of others. Listen now for the word of God. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers for by doing some for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them, those who are being tortured as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from love of money, and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So you can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host and the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then, in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. 
gracious and loving God, as did Columba in days of old, we continue our journey in the coracle of transition, firm in the belief that as you guided Columba, so you will guide us. Let your love, mercy, and wisdom fill our sails for the journey ahead. Amen. Please be seated. Last Sunday, I tried to ground our journey through the year, our year of transition in the image of St. Columba's Coracle as his small band of monks set sail for lands unknown. We have the advantage of hindsight, knowing that they landed safely on the small isle of Iona. They did not know the outcome. They sailed into the unknown with faith that God would be their guide and companion. Like Columba, we sail for lands unknown. And like Columba, with the same faith that God will be our guide and companion. So what do we need for our journey? We need everyone in the boat. We don't want you standing on the shore while we sail off. We need you with us. We are all in this together. We may be small in number, but here is what I know about you already. I have watched how you care and love one another, how you follow up and be good shepherds with one another and how you pray for one another. Besides your care for one another, many of you are working so hard in your various responsibilities and ministries, and we are filled with gratitude for you. Some of you are not able to be as active as you once were. We understand that, and we are grateful for your previous service. For some of you, we invite you to discern a more active part in the parish and prayerfully consider how you might join one of our ministry teams. This year is a critical time in our life as a parish, and we need everyone engaged as they are able. You will be hearing more about this in the days and weeks ahead. For our journey, we need certain provisions. First, our first provision is the Eucharist. Our Eucharistic worship is the center of our life together, and out of it, out of, it, out of our Eucharistic worship, everything flows. In addition to our worship together, individually, we need to be anchored in our prayer life and spiritual practices. This means we need Christian formation for adults and children. Out of our worship flows our outreach ministries, and in those ministries, with others, we are building God's dream of love and justice for everyone, especially those who are most at risk in our neighborhoods and communities. And when the waves come over the rails, when the sides of the boat are weakened, when the sails get ragged and torn, we need to repair and secure them. And so we take care of our grounds and buildings. Finally, we need seed, livestock, and tools for when we reach land and start building our future. This is the work that you will be doing in transition as you prepare for the new land. St. Columba left Ireland for different reasons than ours. They left for a new land where they built a new community on Iona. We are not being asked to leave and go to a new place and rebuild, or are we? 
Like Columba, we carry what is best from our past, what has fed and nurtured us. All the while, we remain open and curious for what awaits us, what is new. Our conversations over the next year will be about what is best about who we are as the people of St. Columbus, what we want to carry with us into the future, where we are prepared to change and grow, and what you are looking for in a new servant leader. Now, for the good of our life together in the Coracle, we need some agreed-upon ground rules. In Genesis, we are reminded that we are all made in the image of God. And if that is true, then we are all made in the, in the image of divine love. This means that in spite of our failings and imperfections, the deepest truth about all of us and each of us is that we are made in the image of divine love and that that love is planted in all of us. That divine love is the core of who God has created us to be. And if I am made in the image of love, and you are made in the image of love, then this fundamentally changes how we care and support one another with respect and dignity. In addition to our uniqueness in God's love, we are inevitably diverse. Not only is diversity inevitable, it is good. God is the author of our uniqueness as it, and embraces our diversity. So how we care for one another and listen to one another in our diversity is as important and perhaps more important than any different differences we might hold. And yet, God yearns that we, that are in our diversity, we find unity. So how do we embrace our God-given diversity, which flows from our individual social, cultural, religious beliefs, and so much more, seeking God's unity? In our world today, Sadly, our world is bunkered, deeply embedded in fear. Even our religions are separated from one another. This is fear-based. If we hear one message in scripture, God reminds us over and over again, be not afraid. Be not afraid. I believe God wants so much more than being bunkered and hunkered down in our different silos. The church should be where we look out to the world around us, study, talk, pray about the great issues of the day. Church is where we bring our greatest needs, our greatest joys, our broken hearts to be mended. So how we engage one another, listen to one another, support one another, is our mission in community. The late Frederick Buechner famously said, your vocation in life is where your greatest joy meets the world's greatest needs. Let St. Columba be where our deepest joys and deepest needs meet. We hear this echoed in Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Paul writes, For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews, Greek, slave, or free. And we are all made to drink of the one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. 
And then Paul goes on to say perhaps the most important thing that Paul writes in all of his letters. He, he says in that great chapter of love. And now faith, hope, and love abide. And the greatest of these is love. Ultimately and finally, God's love will be our companion and guide. Let us pray that as we come together, we share our deepest needs and our deepest joys. And as we do that, as we listen to one another and to God, God's love, mercy, and wisdom will show us the way. Amen. As you are able, please join us in standing for the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, God will never leave us or forsake us. Let us humbly appeal to our faithful God, saying, We offer to you, O God, a sacrifice of praise. We offer the fruit of our lips. We pray for our leaders, those who speak your word to us, especially our bishop and our priest. May your whole church listen for your voice and obey your words. We offer to you, O God, a sacrifice of praise. We offer the fruit of our lips. O God, you exalt the humble and humble the exalted. We pray that the leaders of the nations will serve their people in humility and manage their affairs with justice. May the poor and lowly be treated with respect and shown mercy. We offer to you, O God, a sacrifice of praise we offer the fruit of our lips. You have created a beautiful planet full of wondrous creatures and magnificent works. Open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world around us. We offer to you, O oh God, 
a sacrifice of praise, we offer the fruit of our lips. We pray for all laborers, for those who work, that they might be fulfilled, for those in need of work, that they might find meaningful employment, for those who are struggling to make ends meet, that they might receive a fair wage for their labors. In labor and in rest, be glorified by all we do. We offer to you, O oh God, a sacrifice of praise. We offer the fruit of our lips. We pray for the strength to do your will. May we boldly and compassionately welcome the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. May all of us know you as God, our helper. We offer to you, O oh God, a sacrifice of praise. We offer the fruit of our lips. O God, you invite those who have died to feast at your heavenly banquet. We take great hope in the promise that not even death will cause you to leave us or forsake us. We offer to you, O God, a sacrifice of praise. We offer the fruit of our lips. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for the church for our bishops, Justin, Michael, and John, and for St. Columbus, the Threshold Project, our Children's Learning Center, our Project Hope Food Ministries, and our clergy, staff, vestry, and transition and search committees. And we pray for those with immediate needs, especially Adrian, Seth, Katie, Sarah, Jim, Commander, Chris, Thea, James, Emily, Michael, Patricia, Colin, Allison, Barbara, Gail, Deanne, Caitlin, Lisa, Ernest, Kate, Timothy, Jillian, Deborah, Nazar, Sandy, Dory, Pauline, Sylvia, Stan, Beth, Jenny, Jennifer, Richard, Sue, Candace, Danielle, Marlene, Jen, Josette, Melissa, Gail, Sylvia, Vicki, Jerry, Gail, Jackie, Sandy, Maggie, Sandy, Denise, Robbie, Bill, Richard, Dick, Skylar, and Mona. And for those who need our continuing prayers, whose names are printed in your bulletin, we pray for those who are traveling particularly Laura Lee and Mike Brown. We give thanks for all members of our St. Columbus Parish family. And we pray for the world, for all who are suffering or have died because of the coronavirus pandemic, for all victims of violence, and to turn the hearts of those who would do harm, for all who have suffered because of the sin of racism and oppression, for those affected by natural disasters, especially wildfires, and for peace in the Middle East and all troubled areas of the world, especially Ukraine and Russia, and for all those serving at home and abroad, including Liam, Simon, Matthew, Matt, Nathan, Jonah, David, Noah, DeLondon, and Marty. The flowers on the high altar are given to the glory of God by me, Paul Ament. <laughs> in thanksgiving for my beautiful wife, Gail Ament, and in celebration of her birthday. You may offer your own prayers and petitions at this time. Gracious God, you are always more ready to hear us than we are to pray, and you give us more than we either desire or deserve. May we remember that all our gifts, abilities, and life come from you, and grant that we may use them to your glory and to the benefit of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Please join me in our welcoming prayer. Holy Spirit, 
living within us, guide our hearts and minds as we welcome today all those who worship with us at St. Columbus. Give us discerning hearts so that everyone who crosses our threshold feels welcomed in the warmth of your love. Help us to perceive their needs and give us wisdom to respond, knowing each person crossing our threshold is sent by you to enrich our lives. Most of all, O oh God, let this be a place where all your children are embraced and accepted in the name of the child you sent to be our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please be seated for birthdays and anniversaries. I know Paul's excited. So anybody please come forward that has a birthday or an anniversary to celebrate today? Are you Gail? Oh, yay! Isn't it great to have Gail with us after all of these months and all of your prayers? God bless you. Paul? I think you should be here as we make this prayer. Is that all right with you? Oh, good. You could, why don't you stand over here? That's it. Look married. <laughs> Let us pray together. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may the peace which passeth understanding abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Yay. A little applause maybe. A special welcome this morning to anyone who might be visiting with us. If you would like to, it would help us if you could sign the guest registry, which is in the narthex, uh, uh, just outside these doors. Um, and more importantly, as we prepare the table for Eucharist, we want you to know that wherever you are in your journey of faith, that you are welcome to share with us, as we are all invited to come forward and get be and gather around God's table. Walk in love as Christ loves. I think we do the peace first. I've been retired six years, okay? All right, you get to stand up for the peace. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet one another. And now as we prepare the table for Eucharist, 
walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering of generosity and love. May we bring our deepest needs and deepest joys to God's altar today. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets and their courses, and this fragile Earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the stewards of creation but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation, we have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn.
And so, gracious God, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was handed, he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our ancestors, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Hannah, Esther, and Ruth, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we begin to distribute Holy Communion to the congregation here, we invite those who are on the live stream to offer the prayer of spiritual communion, which we join in solidarity with you now. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen.
before we say our prayer of communion after Thanksgiving, I forgot to announce um, one of the most important announcements for September, and that is for our children and youth. Um, registration for Sunday school will be on September 11th and will begin the following week. So we look forward to the resumption of our Sunday school for children. Now, please join me in standing for prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Join you, but also the fans. 